conversations with myself, part one. A few thoughts coming into my head, and I just like to talk about them. What I could see in the work is that it's very much an exploration of what it is to be, what it is to be human. The intensity of the work, the line, the draftsmanship, the clear clarity in getting out something that I could feel that the artist wanted to represent. I was attending the National Art School graduate show and there were these large sort of 180 centimetre by 170 centimetre charcoal works on paper. They were placed in this one gallery in a few different locations, the entranceway and then as you walk into the main gallery. And they just grabbed me. And I immediately set about trying to find if there was a price list because work is available for sale at, at the NASGRAD show. And I'd already noticed that a couple of, a couple of these works had sold and I picked up the sheet and I found it and I was like, oh, this guy's name's Caleb Reed. It didn't mean anything to me. I remember when he started art school, it was this amazing blossoming where he realized, oh, you know, I can, I can do this and it's validated and I get to go into school every day and just immerse myself. I feel like it's remedial whether he's, you know, he's going through, you know, a black dog week or, you know, whether he's had a big night out or if he's just fallen in love with somebody or it's that constant companion that is sort of colouring in the rest of his life. I think Caleb is mature beyond his years in what is the vision of where his work is today and where it's going to go. There is an intrigue about everything that is in his work. Human emotion, um, physical interaction, sex, love, hate, those compounding emotions that make us who we are, but also those points of the human character that get drawn out to make us either the best or worst in ourselves is sort of what Caleb is grappling with. Obviously it comes from a very special place inside of him and it would be directly reflective in his work of his interpersonal relationships with um, those around him, friends, family, people that he's had dealings with in all different forms and facets of life. Because, because for a young guy, he's, he's, had, he's had to grow up fairly quickly. He was always deeply creative and non-conformist to the point where he just held on and and sort of rode his art. I don't feel like it's necessarily just something that he draws on when, when he's in dark times. It's a constant companion. It's there always, you know, and through all the different uh, ebbs and flows of his life. Yeah, they're raging. They're definitely, and that rage can be like a raging darkness or a raging passion or a raging excitement. It's all, the volume's turned up to 11 a lot of the time, and it's just this, you know, he's sucking the marrow out of life. That intensity, it's so focused, you know, he lived with, with $5 in his back pocket for years. He was just like, nah, fuck it, this is, this is who I am. If I'm making art, if I walk past and draw a flower in some dust on a wall, or if I'm just like picking up a pen and whatever comes out, it doesn't have to be of some quality or level, but it's rele relevant to me that I'm engaging with art by just doing. If I had to sit down and just like in my doodling, making weird stick figures or something, that engagement with art is enough and maybe that is the result of lots and lots of years of artists struggling to find it or to find the truth. I think it's those sort of rare, deeper sort of emotions that I like to make work about because they're the confusing areas for me and for us as humans. I think those deep sort of like interaction with other people and mostly interaction with like our deep loved ones or the deep love or you know and it's got this deep emotional baggage and connections that we don't quite know what's happening and there's 
lots of sexuality thrown in there, and then there's different, we're different, like for me it's where I'm a different gender with the person that I'm in love with or engaging with, and what we need from each other, and so there's these really complicated things that happen between, between, um, between people, and that's why I, I mostly am working on painting on those sort of areas. People talk about those in Australian art who had what we would term great line, and people immediately talk about Whiteley, which is the natural go-to, but, you know, really interesting line. Caleb's not so much a landscape painter, but what's the right word? He uses a hodgepodge of different kind of tools to lay down on media to create the images. I mean, you've got everything from the finest quality acrylic and oil paint that money can buy at the best art stores incorporated with charcoal and bits of clippings that he's found in nudie magazines. You know, there's, there's such a cross section of all kinds of material that go into his work, but he's very definitive that it is absolutely of his own. And that graphic quality that he gets from sort of street influence as well coming through and enamel paints and spray, that's unlike any of those other artists that I had mentioned in terms of their practices or forms. It means that a lot of young artists, one of the key things that they have to put into their work that Caleb has got nailed was that first immediate response. There's an immediacy in his work that cannot be denied. The work that Caleb does, the work that is really immediate is so easy to love that people just go, oh my God, I have to have it. And we sell that work literally now sight unseen. I've got new works by Caleb, I'm sending an email through, choose the best one, I'll buy it. No, no, let me send you the image first. Yeah, 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 whichever one you think is the strongest. Nothing's gonna show itself without, um, without me looking. For me, when I'm working through an artwork, there is like a, a stage where I'm like, might be on a track of an art, artist that has previously done it, and then they get pre presented with, you know, three doors to go down, and they've gone down one door, and so I couldn't necessarily like walk down another door, and like, it's this huge playful maze that we get to all like experience and play through. Instead of trying to like walk down this one path, just walking in the path is the funnest bit, like being stuck and lost in the maze, coming out would be sort of a disappointment because you've, you're not in the maze anymore. You know? And the maze is the part where you were focused and you're like just listening to what was left or right and in, in the existence of the experience. There's an excitement and a, a devilish cheekiness that needs to be explored in there that I find, well for me, that's kind of where I find all this excitement and um, I'm confused as well, which is, which is quite important for me. I feel like he's worked out this great formula now where he's got a friend's farm and he'll go up and it's, you know, like this tiny shack in the middle of hundreds of acres of, of bushland and he'll just immerse himself into the process of painting. And then, you know, he'll come down to Sydney and plunge himself into you know, going out and going to gigs and hanging with friends. And I think it's a, a violent swing between solitude and socialising. It's almost like he's figured out his own <laughs> need to take things to the end degree. And so he can do that within each setting. And, and as long as he moves on in time to the next thing, he's generally pretty happy and satisfied. It's almost like it's an impossibility for him not to be doing it. He's constantly, um, there's always a pen and a pad around him and it's a great love in his life and the form might change over time but it'll always be there. You, what you see is what you get with him. It's what you don't see that is even more beautiful in him that comes out in the canvases. And in Caleb's case, and this is not necessarily true of all artists, but in Caleb's case that's an extension of the man. It's, it's almost like his insides come rolling out onto the work and the quality of it because he's a really intriguing, honest and really beautiful, beautiful human being. Because people who even now are starting to get their head around who Caleb is go, oh no, 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 I want that central figure in, in a ball with a lot of emotion, sort of bodies entangled and twined, that's what I want. But that's where I think Caleb has so much, so much more to offer because he can really push it out in different directions. And it's why his work is only going to get better. It's only going to get stronger. Anyway, I've probably talked out by now. I'm not sure if anyone will ever listen to this other than 
You'll listen to it, right, Caleb? <laughs>